Now, 5 a.m. on WKYT this morning, police say they have arrested a man in connection with one of Lexington's latest shootings. A seven-month-old baby is hospitalized after a crash in Lexington, and police are trying to figure out how it happened. And a memorial was held on the University of Kentucky campus for a student who was murdered last week. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning and welcome in to WKYT. It's so nice to have you with us here on this Tuesday as we get this day off and rolling. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. And for Rebecca today, we're tracking some clear skies this morning as you head out the door or to work or to school. But rain is on the way again as you head home this evening. We can't seem to get it totally out of the forecast. And depending on where you are, it could be a shower. It could hang around a little while, which was uh, my experience yesterday afternoon. Meteorologist Micah Harris in our WKYT First Alert Weather Center. Yeah, and we're looking outside, not really tracking much this morning. Late afternoon, early evening, that's when you start to see some rain, more rain. Push on in. Like Barbara was saying, we just can't get rid of it for a day. But you know what? There are two days in the forecast that actually look pretty good and pretty dry. I'll show you that in just a few minutes. But Defender, not picking up anything this morning. It's really about the temperatures. We have a few upper 30s here and there in some of those valley regions. Watch out for that. I mean, that's pretty chilly. 42 now in Lexington, 41 in Danville, and we're now at 40 degrees in Frankfurt. I'll take you into the next couple of mornings because it's much colder than this. That means 30s. I'll show you that coming up. All right, we'll see you in a bit, and we thank you. And new this morning, police have arrested a man in connection with the weekend shooting. Police have charged a 19-year-old with shooting a man on 6th and Ohio streets here in Lexington on Saturday. WKYT's Hillary Thornton joins us live this morning with the very latest developments in this case. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning, Barbara and Bill. That's right. The suspect in one of Lexington's latest shootings is now behind bars after a wild chase yesterday. Police say when they tried to pull over Cashawan Livers, he took off at a high rate of speed. Officers say as he took off speeding in the East 6th Street area, Livers came close to hitting several pedestrians as he lost control and at times drove on the sidewalk. Police say he eventually got out of the moving vehicle without putting it in park. His car then crashed into a home on Breckenridge Street as he ran away. But Livers did not get away for long as officers quickly caught up to him. Police say while searching the car, they found a gun and were later able to connect Livers to a shooting on Saturday near East 6th Street and Ohio. Investigators say Livers fired several shots into a home, hitting one person in the arm. They say he also fired into a car that same night, causing extensive damage. Now, Livers is facing several charges, including fleeing and evading, assault, wanton endangerment, and criminal mischief. He will be arraigned on all of those charges this afternoon. Live in Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. All right, Hillary, thank you very much. Dozens came out for a memorial service held in honor of a UK student who was killed on Friday during a robbery. 22 year old Jonathan Kruger was the photo editor for the Kentucky Colonel, which organized last night's memorial on campus. More than 200 people gathered to share their memories in Memorial Hall. And coming up at 5 30 this morning, you'll hear what Kruger's friends and family said about the impact that he has left on his community. A daycare owner who was charged with abusing a two-year-old child is scheduled to be back in court today. 33-year-old Tracy Four pleaded not guilty last week to first-degree criminal abuse charges. An arrest warrant states that Four placed a beanbag chair on top of the two-year-old boy while he was sleeping. Police say Four then sat on the beanbag while she used a computer. Her preliminary hearing is scheduled for 11 o'clock. 504 on WKYT, and this morning police still don't know what caused a crash that sent a seven month old baby to the hospital. That crash happened about 6 30 last night on Versailles Road. Police say a Nissan with two children and a driver was rear ended by an Intrepid. The people in the Intrepid were not injured. Police say the driver was distraught. A baby riding in the back seat of the Nissan is in critical condition this morning. It was in a car seat, but we're not completely sure how well it was secured. Officers say the seven-month-old baby was the only one who was injured in that crash. 65 cases of expensive bourbon gone. But now the Franklin County Sheriff says his department is close to cracking the case of the missing Pappy Van Winkle. WKYT's Victor Puente joins us from the live desk now with the latest on the bourbon heist. Victor? 
Well, according to the Franklin County Sheriff Facebook page, that major announcement will happen this afternoon. It's a case their office has been working on for a year and a half. That rare bourbon was valued at $26,000 and went missing in October of 2013 from the Buffalo Trace Distillery. Sheriff Pat Melton has said indictments in that case could be coming down soon. We're told he's received new tips and new information in the last month. In March, the sheriff arrested Gilbert Kurtzinger for stolen wild turkey bourbon barrels. Kurtzinger worked for Buffalo Trace, the distillery that makes Pappy Van Winkle. We asked Melton if he thought Kurtzinger was connected to the theft. He would only say the case was still open. Now, that press conference is scheduled for 1.30 the Franklin County Sheriff's Office on Main Street in Frankfort. At the live desk, Victor Puente, WKYT. A man police say escaped from a North Carolina prison 40 years ago has been found in central Kentucky. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office arrested 66-year-old Clarence Moore yesterday afternoon in Frankfort. Now, the sheriff says Moore also had an arrest warrant for contempt of court in Franklin County. He's been taken to the Franklin County Jail. And in Richmond, a Jackson County man was arrested after police say he attacked his wife in the car. 49-year-old Gary Rogers is charged with wanton endangerment and assault. They say he hit his wife repeatedly while she was driving. Police say she nearly blacked out behind the wheel. They say the woman pulled into a parking lot, but witnesses say Rogers kept assaulting her. This morning, friends are remembering a mother killed in a Clark County crash. Investigators say Tina Rapley died yesterday morning after a car hit her SUV on US 60. They say Rapley was taking her daughter to school at the time. We're told the daughter had non life threatening injuries. Friends say Rapley was a breast cancer survivor and was involved in Relay for Life. She loved her community, she loved her family. Friends were important to her. She's just, um, she was just a great all-around person. She was funny. She would help those when they were down, um, if they needed it. It's just, a, it's a big loss for our community and her family. Police think the driver of the car that hit Rapley's SUV may have fallen asleep at the wheel and crossed the center line of the road. He was not injured. And in Laurel County, grief counselors were on hand to help students after a classmate's tragic death. Investigators say a train hit 17-year-old William Walters over the weekend in Laurel County. He was camping with his brother and cousins at the time. But investigators aren't sure why Walters was on the tracks when the train came through. Walters was a senior at South Laurel High School and would have graduated in just a few weeks. His personality and, oh, how, yeah, and how, how awesome he was. He wasn't afraid to do anything. Now Van Kirk Funeral Home in Corbin is handling the team's funeral arrangements. This morning, Warren County deputies are needing your help in finding a missing teenager. 16-year-old Olivia Freeze of Bowling Green was reported missing yesterday morning. Deputies say she was last seen wearing a black hoodie-style sweatshirt and black combat boots. She is a student at Greenwood High School. Investigators say they believe Olivia could be in danger. Time this morning is 8 minutes after 5 on WKYT. Let's take a look now. We're going to uh, check out the I-64, I-75 northern split. So far, we have no major problems that have been reported out on the roads. Everybody moving along fine. And this morning, we don't have that rain that we did have uh, rolling through from time to time yesterday morning. So it should be a, an easy commute. Could in. make it a little bit more pleasant right. as you're driving <laughs> in. <laughs> but, of course, that means the construction crews can get back uh, to their duties as well and trying to get uh, some of these projects done, including the I-75 resurfacing in Madison County, where it's a 55 mile an hour zone from the Clays Ferry Bridge down to Richmond. So that's one something of those. to keep in mind, yeah. certainly. And they're trying to fix those potholes still here and there. But what a great thing! Yeah, we need right. those fixed. So. WKYT this morning, just getting started here on your Tuesday. It's a Mother's Day gift that will set you back more than it's worth. Coming up, why a Starbucks gift card will have you scratching your head. And it's a hashtag you may see on Facebook and Twitter today. The Kyle Jenner Lip Challenge is taking the Internet by storm. We'll explain. That's coming up this morning. That's all I can do to that one. That's ridiculous if you haven't seen it. We'll have that story coming up. Current temperatures, yeah, we're looking out there much cooler. We even have a few more showers to go with that. I'll show you some frost possibilities, too, coming up.